You're listening to Deja. 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 Welcome to another episode of the Open Match Show on Deja Vu. I'm your host, Mike T. I've got Danny B with me. And I've got the godfather of UK MMA, none other than Dave O'Donnell. Here he is. Yeah, that's me. Welcome to the building, Dave. How are you? It's all right, mate. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, Deja Vu. You know, I've been talking to the owners down here. You're doing a good thing. Cheers. Yeah, no that's worries. why we wanted to get you on the show. No worries, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, you've got a show on July the 17th. Can you tell us a little bit about that show on the 17th? Uh, Warrior Challenge, now it's on London Live. We've also got on Showcase Channel. The big main event there, Thomas Savinsky taking on Catlin. It's going to be just that fight alone is worth the ticket money. Yeah. Them two monsters in the cage. Some motherfuckers getting it's knocked It's going to be special. Out. I don't know if we're allowed to swear in the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do we do the swearing? Yeah, do well, it. Fuck yeah. it then. Let's have it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have it proper. Once again, we've got Dave on the show. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you that ain't been to a, a UC MMA show or WC MMA show, it's very... It's, it's a very good night. It's a decent night. I, stop, I have to stop you there. Stop me. It ain't a very good night. It's not. It's entertainment it's at its best. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a good night out, mate. This show, you know it, Dan. Dan, you've been there. Yep. It blows shows out of the water. Yeah. It makes, sometimes it might not have the best fights there, but the atmosphere the you a- get there. That's what I was going to say. The atmosphere, the, music, the girls, the, the girls, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the whole package. You're not just getting a fight night. You're getting a pure night of entertainment. You go to a club, sometimes you go, oh, that was a bit good there, a bit... But the whole night as a whole is monstrous. And that's right. what you've got to think of. It's not just because a lot of times guys go to MMA shows. Yeah. Are they ever going to go back again? Because I've been to some and I'll, it will put me off MMA for the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because you do get lacklustre fights. You do get bad fights. But if everything around it's bad, you can hear a pin drop and you know, no music, no light. You're like, hey, mate, get me out of here. <laughs> We've been at boxing shows where I couldn't wait to get out the door. But, yeah. you know, down there, sometimes I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if it's good. Peter come up to me going, my God, the best show I do. And that's what I want. I want them to get blown away. Yeah. You know what I mean? The is there still is the consistency. Go on. You've been going for God knows how long. And this, I'm not never, a dinosaur, ever Dan. heard you cancel a show. Nothing like that. Never. We've all been there, you know. I've I've sat there on some shows where we're doing the calculations afterwards, mate. It's criminal, you know, when you think about the money you lost or whatever. And I know, even with this show in a couple, a couple of weeks' time, three weeks ago, I would have cancelled the show. I, yeah. look, I looked at the numbers, looked at the thing, went, oh, anybody in the logistic mind would cancel the show, but I never can. I'm like, hey, no, we're crack on. It doesn't matter. We're going to do this. We're going to do it. I'll make it work. Yeah. I'm doing nine a year now. But I've done. 13 a year before so I've done big numbers I'm happy with 9 but 9 is a graph Dan as you know oh, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a graph mate. As, as Dan said like, you've been consistent throughout the years like, 2002 how, there you go how hard is that to look at my hair I had a big set of hair before <laughs> yeah, I started him he had an afro he had one of these on his head <laughs> but, but. it is I, it, uh, it, don't get it, me wrong I, I, I do laugh I mean me and Dan has been speaking earlier on You've got to laugh at the would-be guys like, oh, I've got a bit of money for my dad, or I've got a little <laughs> investment. Oh, no, I could do that. how can I spunk 50 grand really quick? Go and do an MMA show. Mm. I'll show you how to do it really quick. You know? And all these guys, they think they can do it well, but the heartache of it and the pain of when you lose big money. And you've only got to look at the number of shows since 2002. Knuckle up, chuckle up. <laughs> you, you name the show the list goes on yeah. and on European MMA the best show ever 80 grand in the hole the first show gone you know all these shows think they're going to do yeah. good but can they actually back what they're going to say they're going to do and that's what it's all about backing still what the you last say man standing do. yeah sorry still the last man standing well that's you t- well I'm trying to be Dan well, really I'm what's your what's your key to, to consistency not that we want other promoters to yeah I ain't telling you know, I ain't yeah. telling him <laughs> shit. I ain't telling you shit guys I ain't telling you nothing <laughs> No, it's, it's Listen, anybody who knows me, right, yeah. I'm, I, I wouldn't say perfectionist, but if someone says to me, look, this is your job, you're going to do this, I, I'm 100% in it. Yeah. You know, I'm my, all of a sudden I go, right, I'm going to get really good at that. I'm going to get, that's what I've got to be. I've got to be one of the top people. Like, I can't just go and do it just to make up numbers. Yeah. You know? and, and that's what any business I've been into since I had my first business, uh, a whole company when I was 23 years old, my first house when I was 21. Second house when nice. I was 25, convertibles. Well, you know, everything was just building businesses. Yeah. And I've always done it thinking, right, I'm going to be good at that. I'm going to be good at that. When I got into martial arts, I, mean, I was a kid at judo when I was nine. That 
by 13, I, my first gold medal. You know, you get to a certain stage and we are thinking, if I'm going to go into it, I'm going to be good at it. I ain't coming to be second yeah. best. Yeah, no half-hearted. No yeah. half-hearted. You know, you've yeah. got to do it. But your family suffers from it. You know, a lot of the time, your family, your friends, because they go, hang on, well, how comes you're not going out? How comes you're not doing this? How comes you you know, before we, when training, I weren't training three days a week. I was training seven days a week in the morning and the night. Yeah. You know, because you wanted to be good at what you was good at. You can't do it by just going, I put a little bit of effort in. If you look at all top people, they're doing it 24-7. Yeah. But you've got to make room for your, I say, people out there, make room for your family, make room for your loved ones, because otherwise you ruin a lot of friends and a lot of families along the way. So you've got to kind of keep it balanced. Yeah. So. That's a big key to your success, though, your family. They were hundred percent. Very close. Oh, hundred percent. You know, yeah. without them, Mel. You know, yep. pff, Mel, CJ, Dex. You know, they're wrapped around me all the time. Yeah, you know, they really are a good bond to me. Mm. They keep me. They keep me going. And I get friendships along the way. You know, you make a lot of friends, and it's a small business. It's just. It's a small. I was going to say that small. you must have some good contacts yeah. that you've met throughout the years. Oh, mate. I mean, the list is endlessly. I mean, at the moment, I'm with uh, Grant Walkman all the time. You yeah. know, he's helped me do the shows. Is any other Andy Gear. Alexander, all these guys are with me 24-7, you know, pushing, 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 yeah. you know. But we're all the same mental attitude. To be number one, you've got to keep pushing. You've met a few arseholes as well, though, right? A load of arseholes. Yeah. But, you know, that's what it is. That's part of the business. That's part of the business. You're going to meet arseholes Come in any business. business. <laughs> 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 he wants to get the arsehole part. Who are the arseholes? Who are the Come on, let me have it. So with your, sorry, Dan, before you go, with your, uh, that CJ, for instance, when did you discover that? she can present and, and host these shows because I've seen her in the cage and interview fighters and do things she's going to kill me for this right she'll kill me for this <laughs> I, I, she will kill me CJ's always been a uh, since she was little we always want to get on stage she's been a dancer she's been uh, in theatre always doing shows etc yeah. but never one for the camera it was just I said look we've got the cameras here you need to start getting we'll, we'll just do it behind the scenes at the back interview the fighters yeah really <laughs> yeah yeah okay alright I'll do it so, I can't find her I'm looking for her First fight, it's really, I can't find it. In a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> crying to myself, I can't do it now. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, please, please go away. <laughs> all right, all right, come on, have another shot. You'll be, you'll be okay. And then we used to get down to the studios yeah. with, with Depeche, with Steve. You know, and the more times you're in front of a camera, it's so hard because people go, oh, I can do that, I can do that. And then they go, do it now then. Yeah. And they go, blah, blah, blah. Freeze. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Sounds like a bit like and, me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, now you're cool now, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like he's ready to go, I be for giving all that camera <laughs> and the DJ ones and yeah. twos and all that turn out. Ready to go. But yeah, it's, it's, but she's yeah. just she grown does, into it. And then she looks put, professional when she does it. This is the thing she, I'm trying to get But that's what I'm saying. To, it, it, it's time. It, it's an apprenticeship. You know, yeah. you can't get out and go, right, you're going to do this. It's a learning curve. Same as me and Andy Gear. Me and Andy Gear. First got in front of the cameras, they went, right, we're going to get two presenters. It's going to be two grand each. Me and him looked at each other and went, how much? <laughs> we're going to do that shit. <laughs> we're going to do it. <laughs> oh, we, of course, we were going, oh, bloody hell, we've got to practice this. But you get more fluent. You, yeah. you weren't great at the beginning. But when Sky Sports accept you to do it, you know you're halfway cracked up. You know, you're thinking, we ain't half doing a bad job. You know, yeah. we're a bit like Marmite. You have a lovers or haters. So what was that like? You get the, what did you get? An email, phone call, Sky Sports? I wish it was that easy. <laughs> Hello, come and be on our show. It's yeah. Sky Sports. No, it, mate, it, it's a lot of contracts, a lot of phone calls, a lot of meetings. It really is hard to jump to them, them kind of big levels. Was that on your behalf of putting yourself out there saying, look, this is what we got to offer? Does anyone want to work with us or was it more them... A little coming bit. in and trying to I've got to stop you there because back in the day like now you could go right I'm going to do an MMA show we'll crack one out wherever Yeah. back in the day 2002 me and Andy was in front of everybody councils police you couldn't put a show on anywhere you had to prove what you were worth yeah. TV wouldn't touch you it w- with a barge pole yeah. you know it was re- it's, it was a graph back then you know and I wish Cage Rage really if we'd have come five years later we'd have smashed a granny out of it yeah, you know, we'd definitely. have been number one without a doubt and gone to the stars but we was always a bit before, you know, a bit before your time. We all come up with new ideas. So it is, it is one of them, really. You yeah. know, it, it's a very hard, hard, hard thing. But now, I'd say it's easy. You want to put on a show? Yeah, go and get a cage, go and get some fighters, <laughs> fish bash, bosh. Got a little show going on. Let's do another 50. You know, but, but that's what it's like. But back then, you had to go in front of police, the councils, the whatever, just to get sanctioned for a show. Yeah. And put I, it took, on it, it, I took you to your first cage race, didn't I? Was, I was going to say, yeah, my first yeah. show was at, um, Wembley, was it Wembley? Conf- Wembley Conference Centre. Yeah. Wembley Conference Centre. Yeah. We were at us back probably from, we'd done uh, number seven uh, t- to number 15 uh, at Wembley Conference Centre. Yeah. That's when we made, mm-hmm. the, made the move to there. 
And that was a big, you know, that was only 2,000 seat arena. Yeah. But that was massive. It seems back massive, then, yeah. For back then, that was, that was huge. You know, that was absolutely fantastic. And there were some good fights then. I think I see... Um, Anderson Silva, and Vita Belfort. Yeah. I swear the first oh, one you went with was Cyborg Manhoff. Cyborg Manhoff, number 15. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, them kind of guys. And that's where we made a difference. All right, putting a show on, we brought the best guys in from and, around the world. And, and that's one of the main reasons I wanted to get you on, because you've mixed with some of the elite fighters now in, in world fighting, you know, in UFC. Anderson Silva, like you said, Manhoff, um, Belfort. Belfort. There's, the list is endless. Pickett, Manuel. Bisping. Or Bisping, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate, stop. me and Bisping, when we go out, we have it large. <laughs> 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 Got videos on my phone. When we get drunk, we get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all really down to earth guys, you know, all, all these kind of guys. They're yeah. so down to earth. They're so, they're, they're so nice people to meet and it was good. i done an interview with uh, Anderson Silva about Oh, I mean, like this time last year, you know, and I was, the bloke was going, I oh, was just wait in line there, wait in line there. I'm thinking, oh, I'll wait in line, I'll wait in line. <laughs> All of a sudden, Anderson <laughs> Silva's doing his feet. He's looked up, he went, I got on his knees, started praying, Dave, my boss. And he's kept running, and I couldn't believe, you know, it's so yeah. nice. He didn't have to do that, you know. Yeah, he, didn't yeah. have, he, he went to all the other guys, just move out of the way. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps in, I, now, I, man. I, I'm yeah. doing the interview with this guy first, which was amazing. And the producer was there going, oh, I didn't realise you knew him. I yeah, know well. him, but you know, I only <laughs> give him about four of the best fights of his life on my show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he, and it was so, and he done it with Dex as well. We, when Dex was only small, yeah. we was in a big queue at uh, one of them. Uh, what are they called? Them? What was it HMV? No, oh, price. <laughs> no, you know the uh, <clears throat> Joe Long does them. Uh, um, Fighters Inc. Fighters Inc. Yeah, Fighters yeah. Inc. They're, they're, they're all, all the great big stands there, UFC stand. Of course, the queue was going 100, 150 long around, around the corner, and then. And to see me and see Dex, he went, ah, picked him up, took a picture. Like, yeah. So it's nice when they recognise you from, from just one of the crowd. It is, yeah. it's, it's really, really So we spoke of Anderson Silva being on one of your shows. How, how did you come into contact with him in the first place? How did, it, how, did it, how did you two meet? We'd always look for like guys who had just like, lost a fight on a pride and needed a comeback. They needed to get to somewhere different. Yeah. So they just come out of contract. And Anderson was really ranked high, but he... He had a fight on Pride, and he was out of contract. He was out of contract. Yeah. And Lee Murray, at the time, wanted to fight the, you know, as best as he could up the ranking. Course, so we yeah. went, let's make some magic happen. And we did, you know. It, it, it was one of them. But he come back like four times. But, you know, he had some amazing fights yeah. and some of the greatest knockouts. But as you put him back to that Lee Murray fight, if you look how people go, oh, was Lee Murray the real deal? Was it all this? It's got to be the real deal, because Anderson couldn't even finish him. Three yeah. rounds of, of the hardest beating fight. that... Epic fight, and, and Lee still standing at the end of it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Limping, but still standing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that just shows you the heart of the man. You know yeah. what I mean? And they're both so respectful afterwards because we, you know, we thought it was going to go crazy. But, you know, Lee realised, of course, that is a, that is a God standing right there. Mm. And I think even Anderson realised, God, that's an animal standing right there. I yeah. don't know how I couldn't finish him. That mutual but respect. Yeah, for each other, yeah, a lot of mutual respect there. But, yeah. I mean, Dan, you remember the days of Elite? I mean, it was great because I'd go, right, Anderson, before you Came go. Down, didn't you? Yeah. Come over to the club, teach the class. So I'd have them teaching all, all my guys at Dan at Lee. Well, Anderson Silver. Yeah, Anderson, wow. Anderson Belfort, Belfort. Uh, Matt Lindland. All of, you name every fight that come over, I'd make sure to come down to the boys because it, 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 so I'm associated with the yeah. boys. Yeah, guys have got a little surprise for you tonight. They come Spires down. everyone, yeah. yeah. I yeah. made a hoist, Gracie. All of them would come down to the club. So it was great for the, for the lads who were training with me. Those but were the better days of MMA. The better days, yeah. <laughs> the grounded days. Yes. Booyaka. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, but the day that uh, Anderson knocked out uh, Kim, uh, sorry, uh, Franklin, Tony Fra- Fricklin, he was actually, he's actually, he's actually saying, going, right, this is the move. I mm-hmm. And he was teaching us in the league this, this move. We were going, leave. He said, yeah, I'm going to try and try it tomorrow night. And I swear to God, me and Andy are going, no way. And when he put it out, we just looked at him and went, I can't wow. believe it. He only yeah. done it. But he had a plan. You know, he said, I want to try this new move. Yeah. I'm going to try it on him. And it worked, and I remember everybody going crazy. And just, <laughs> that good? Yeah. That They're good. the sort of things that was happening back in the days. You know, it was amazing, amazing times. Yeah, jogging with Butterbean and all that. Yep. Butterbean. <laughs> oh, the, story, the, the stories getting go drunk, on. Right? Getting drunk <laughs> with Tank Abbott. All, all that stuff, mate. Crazy, crazy <laughs> stuff. Bar fights. You know, crazy it. stuff. <laughs> so let's let's move on now. Cage Warriors. I'm hearing they're making a comeback. But Dougie Truman coming back. <laughs> See, people, a lot of Cage Warriors people wouldn't even know Dougie True. I mean, I knew Dougie right back when Cage Warriors number one. We helped him out and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, yeah, go on, move on. Forget about the past. Let's talk about the present. Yeah. So they're making a comeback now, supposedly. 
They've had, got new investors, etc., etc. Et well, I, I think Graham Boland's got uh, got a new spin on it, mm-hmm. so he's got to wait and see. You know, he, he's a good businessman. You can't take that away from him. He's a good businessman. So, will it affect your show with fighters? It, it didn't affect my show before. Do you know, you, you got to look at them. Okay. I always say there's so, there's so many fighters out there. You know, yeah. just when you're thinking, oh my god. If Jack Mason goes now, my whole life's going <laughs> to... Yeah. There's a new it's little kid coming out. Another 16, yeah. 18 year old. You go, door. oh my God, look at this. And they're coming so fast and furious. You know, when you look at the level of MMA today, like the 18 year olds, it's going to be scary in a couple of years' time. Yeah. It's going to be scary out there. You know, yeah. there's some really good guys out there. A lot so, of them started off, uh, um, off at your show. You had Arnold Allen. I saw his yeah, first fight. Yeah, yeah. Michael Page. Saw his first fight. But... Dan, the list goes on and on. As, as you say, you know, all these guys, I look at them and think, you know what, this guy, it's, it's a new guy. I can't even mention names now because it, you'll be feeding them off me, so just wait till <laughs> I get them in now. I get a few of these guys in and they are, you know, they set people's hearts alight. They've mm. got something different about them. But people say, why don't you contract the fighters, Dave? Listen, I've never, and if there's a fighter out there that I've ever done it to, come forward, write your emails, fucking phone up the show. Yeah. I've never took a penny off a fighter. You know, like I say, mm-hmm. even when we had big contracts for them, we never took a dime off any of them. And we've put them in countries and give them good money, 20 grand, whatever it was, take them to pride, whatever. Me and Andy Gear never took a penny off any of them fighters. It was all about, let's make the fighter. We, I, I know how hard they graft. Yeah. I train them. I know how hard it is to become a fighter. Yeah. Yes, you get paid shit money at the beginning, 200 pounds. But if there's any chance I can get any of them fighters big money, I never go, oh, you're getting that now. I'm going to take X, Y, and Z. Off they go. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And away, and I never hold them down with a contract. You know, if you if you want to go, you want to spread your wings, great. If you don't, you know there's a home here for you. So yeah. simple as that. You as feel there's a like some of them should be a bit more loyal, though. Dan, you should surely Dan make sense. It's there's old school and there's old school. It, loyalty out there is very few and far between. People will fuck you over these days for a couple of hundred quid. It, it is mm. what it is. Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm under no disillusion that people do that. They go, oh, I'm going to put you on this little. Uh, South Pier show, it's round the corner. Oh, you might better get, I'll give you a couple of hundred quid more. They go like that. <laughs> oh, I'm off. Like the sea. Bosh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, there's another one. Oh, it's got this big name. Quick. Uh, fighters jump, and they do. But any fighter who stays with me, if there's anything I can give them, they know they're going to get it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You keep good rapports with all your fighters. Because I see a I lot try of, to. Um, <laughs> I always see a Brad Pickett at your show, a man who will still be at your show. And these are guys, Jason Young, these are people that have been to UFC and been back. But they're still at your show. I'll still see them casually. Well, you know, I've never treated them any different. Yeah. You know, at any time. I mean, even with Brad Pickett, we got him into a K1 in LA. We got into a massive K1 fight. Uh, it was called K1, an MMA fight. Some of his great careers, and, and all to jump in. in, in what? So in, you took him out there, or yeah, got him the fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in LA, that's when we done the deal with uh, Pro Elite and, and Cage Rage and all that. We was just before that kind of deal with yeah. mixed with all the Japanese guys, Mark Weir. We took to Pride. All, all these kind of guys. You could pick up the phone now. Never took a cent off them. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Anything they got, they kept. It was as simple as that. Yeah. Let's talk about your London Live deal. As that worked out for you. You really want to talk about the London Live? <laughs> I was. I, I, I was actually up watching it. Three a.m. in the morning. Well, listen. I thank you. I thank you, London Live. You're listening. There was one person up at three o'clock in the morning. I was actually watching it live at three. I didn't pre-record you it. Te- on you sent me the text. Really? Yeah. You sent me the text. Yeah, yeah, listen, it is what it is. We're starting out. I, I know they're a bit edgy. They're thinking, oh my god, it's a bit violent. It's a bit this. It's a bit that. We've given. You know, they, they've got a lot of hours of us. You know, there's a lot, a lot of footage that they're going to be showing. And I think when they realise, hang on, this stuff is you know top quality. They're going to be put us on at different hours. But yeah. I, I know I've got a big meeting with them next week. But there's a starting point. I agreed it. Three o'clock in the morning is three o'clock in the morning. I'm not happy with it, but it's a starting point. And it means a lot, now, yeah. a lot of the guys now are going to get exposure, which they, which they didn't get before. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So uh, we've got to push forward and get a lot of people with some uh, Red Bull down them so they stay awake. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Mate. That's how we've got to roll. A lot of Red Bull. Is there competition on that channel? With another MMA I don't show. see any competition, Dan. No. I don't know if you want to be specific, but I, at the moment, I don't see any competition whatsoever. There's a okay. no bridge or, or a, a, a no shoe. I don't, I don't know, but is that what you're compete trying to say? Compete with yourself, right? Sorry? Compete with yourself. I try and compete with myself all, all the time. It's, to me, your hardest enemy is always yourself. Self. Can you get enough yeah. this? Can you get enough that? But yeah. you're proven, so you don't Yeah, yeah. You. You're proven. Proven blood. It's proven. 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 Uh, very, very proven. <laughs> 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 I got a message from your daughter. Nice. No, 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 already. Hey guys, it's CJ, yeah. it's Dave's daughter. 
Um, I feel like if you're into MMA and you don't know who Dave is, then you haven't really been in the sport long enough. Um, yeah, he's been around for so long and he's done such a good thing for UK MMA. I mean, this is going way back when we used to train in Elephant and, you know, I was maybe four, five, six running around. But, you know, we was training back then and you guys were training and you guys were learning and um, it's crazy to see the growth. I mean, obviously, you've had like UFC and everything else that's, you know, made it global, but from the smallest gym going into this big name it's been on tv it's been you know um everywhere that it has been i feel like you know dave's done so much for the sport and he's the sort of person that you know if a fighter comes along to him and shows a bit of something he'll push that he'll push you know making a name for them putting them on tv being behind their career you know pushing them onto ufc he he's not the sort of promoter that will say, right, you're only on my show and that's it. Um, he's very giving and it's hard, you know, even coming from our family um, because of how much he puts into the sport. But, I mean, we're all so proud because, you know, you can't really associate MMA without Dave. He's done so much for it. Um, and you see the shows, it's such a good event, it's so lively and it's still what it was 10 years ago and that's what I love about it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's Dave for you. <laughs> it's making me feel old. I know, it's making me want to cry. <laughs> I was going to cry. It's making me want to cry. Like, like, getting uh, tissues. God love us. Well, <laughs> she's seen the hardship and she has been, she's grown with it. I said, I'm doing a doc and I just want to say uh, thanks to the uh, DMI guys, you know, uh, Dean and Martin. Martin you know, yeah. They've done a Very lot of research guys. on me now. And I'm Very going back guys. with CJ and going back to when there were kids and like Dex running around with one years old, but taking pictures of Horace Gracie, Henzo Gracie. And it's so funny just to look back at the history and go, oh my God, they've, yeah. they've been through this for so long, you know what I mean? And, and it is hard for them because they, they've seen a lot of me flying away, uh, working long hours. But now I do like it because it's, it's local, we're grounded. And we're working together, so it's yeah. even great to see. She's going, right, Dad, what we've got to do? We've got to rehearse. We've got to, you know, she's working. We say it's good. She, yeah, she knows yeah. what, what it's like. It's more of a hobby than a, than a job. No, I don't think it's more than a bloody hobby than a job. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was just a hobby. <laughs> uh, so, for touching back on the London Live, um, what time can people catch you and what days is it on London Live? Every day. Every day. Every day. Two shows a day, 3.30 and 3 o'clock. Uh, a M. Cool. That's in the morning. Yeah, not in the bloody <laughs> evening. In the bloody morning. But anyway, we won't get back on it. Yeah. But every day, you know, for the whole month of July, for the starters, you got cage fighters. So if you've ever been on cage fight, all the fighters have been out there. Tune in because you might see yourself. In. Basically, well, they, yeah. they definitely will see yeah. himself. Yeah. Nice. A quick opinions on Griffin Khalid for September fifth, mate. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm looking forward to it. Don't eat my lines, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not too old to just jump over that seat and just rip some necks and all that thing. Uh, it's going to be a really good fight. You know, they're both really good strikers, really good strikers. Khaled's an animal. There's no doubt, doubt about it. But he's had his injuries. He's come back. Wasn't great with Kez Mamba. So if Richard Griffin is looking at it, going, hang on here, mate, I could take this guy out. And Khaled's going, hang on here, that was a bad, I'm going to come back stronger. So all in all, it's, it's a really good fight, you know, yeah. to be looking for the myth versus the madman, that's going to be a, a monstrous fight. I know you train all the time, Dan, so you see his kind of progression. You know, Richard, look at, look at uh, Kelly, when he fought Kelly, mate. What yeah. a oh, tough great fight. fight. Yeah. You know Everyone I mean? thought he was going to get beat up in the first round, knocked out. Of course out. he did, yeah. And, and look, look and how Kelly he came that. in and took him down straight away. We was expecting a stand-up war. Well, that's what I, I really am hoping with Khaled and Richard, let's see. I mean, Khaled's got the potential to stand up mm-hmm. 100%. Oh, I know Richard has. So, yeah. of course, I'd love to see it standing for the first you know, give it three minutes and then go, <laughs> I'll do what you want now, lads. But at least we've had a bit of a walk. Yeah. All you want is a tear up from the guys. But I know Khaled's got a record to protect. And, that, and that's the difference. When you're at 4-0, and you start getting nervy going, oh, hang on here. If, if I make one mistake, this could be my first. Like, yeah, and you, you can never worry about that first loss. But Richard's been there. He's had yeah. that. So he ain't going to be worrying about nothing. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be a really good fight. Really good fight. The thing with Richard, he has a problem with saying no. I can give him four hard guys. I can give him one easy guy. Guaranteed he'll take the hardest out of all of them. You've got to remember, Dan, I trained him back in the league. So <laughs> <laughs> he was as mad then as he is now. Do you yeah. know, he never, ever refused. And that's... 
kind of why I push my guys to be anyway because yeah. it's no good going you're a fighter and going oh, I don't like him he's got a bit of a staff and yeah. he's got a pit bull dog don't want <laughs> mate not happy about that oh, I don't want to fight tonight but I'll uh, fight next week yeah. no mate you know I know his mum's brother's cousin I met with him in the pub <laughs> yeah, you know you got to remember I've been around all these fighters and I get the phone calls time and time again of the reasons why they won't fight and it is lovely when you get a guy like Richard to go yeah I fight yeah, but I ain't told his name yet. It don't matter. It don't matter. I'm fighting. <laughs> yeah. You know, Chris Harmon, rest in peace. He was he was like that, you know. Yeah, definitely. He was one definitely of them guys. He would fight. And you, but you knew straight away. When I met him on Fighting Hurts with Chris Harmon, you just knew he was like that. He went, it doesn't matter. A fight's a fight. Yeah. And there's a referee. That's yeah. a bonus. You know, <laughs> yeah. a, lot of them, a lot of them kind of guys are like, mate, it's a bonus. I'm getting the cage or something. As long as it ain't someone who's like 28 and 0. But, you know, Richard has always been that way. He'll fight anybody. And that, that's a great a great thing to have for me as a promoter it's fantastic yeah of course of course and when can when's that fight again is that September the 5th don't you dare forget it bruv so get your tickets for that show I'll be getting mine definitely on cage side Dave good outside I'll sell you one (laughs) (laughs) or as a promoter (laughs) let's go on to let's talk more about your documentary that you've got with DMI how when is that being released is there any dates on it well do you know we were going to release it Dean Martin and myself, we was going to release it, I think, two Fridays ago, or, or last Friday. Yeah. But we looked at it, we all looked at it, and she pressed the button, and I went, there's so much more to give on that. You know that, I've got all this footage, and, and, and I went, we haven't shown the best bits of this. And mm-hmm. I, I know it's really hard for them, because I'm just giving them footage, and they're, mm-hmm. they're putting it in. So we've gone back to the, not right to the, to the drawing board, but we've gone back, we've got so much more footage now, and hopefully sometime next week, we're going to start inserting bits and pieces, film a few more bits, because they said, the more we're looking into you, we're finding more stuff about it. We're How long leave is it? it out, Four hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a trilogy. Well, they're, they're, well, they're trying to cut it down to, we're, we're trying to cut it down to about 30 minutes. It's like okay. TV time, 30 minutes. But it, it's hard. Yeah, you can just keep talking. And I've got, I say I've got a lot to talk about, but I've done a lot of things in my life. Yeah. And, you know, you can touch on one subject and I can just keep going. Because I love a good old chat. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. No, I didn't I know love it. a little <laughs> chat, bro. If I've got time to talk. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, this... As you say, MMA has been a massive part of my life. You know, ever since when I first, in 94, when I first saw number one, I was, watched Horace Gracie mm. beat all them big guys. I went, I want to meet this geezer. 100% I've got to meet this geezer. I was into martial arts back then. So, yeah. And your dream as a martial artist was always, oh my God, I saw that Van Damme film with all different styles <laughs> yeah. coming. We've got to get in there and start doing it. So straight away it was like, let's practice some of this shit. You know, yeah, because straight away it was like, oh my God. And... And I think it's embedded in, from that being my started since I was 18, it's come a long way. But you meet so many good friends along the way. Of course. They're not drunks. They're not this, that, and the other. Because they're all in the same thing as you. Yeah. You know, they're all in the same doing good yeah. and, and training your body and being different. And I, I say the same thing with cage fighters. I used to train hundreds of people. But there'll be a certain guy that's ready for the cage because mm-hmm. you've got to be a little bit yeah. off, off the mark to go, I want to be a cage fighter. Yeah, yeah I want to get in the cage. I want to have a fight. I want to have a fight. <laughs> So you get like Mr. T, you know. Oh. So as soon as you walk, as soon as they walk in the cage, they're tearing up, their arms getting broken. They're going, "Are you tapping?" No. Why would I do that? <laughs> Ain't tapping for shit. You go. Oh. He's got something bad. And I heard the stories with Lee Murray. You know, when they were choking him out and everything, he was like, "Yeah, ain't gonna he wouldn't, tap." Wouldn't tap. They've got yeah. that street mentality. You can't, you can't train that. Loose. That's mm. in, uh, that's in the heart. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's in the heart. It's in the. The, warrior, the more you, the more you're getting hit, yeah. the more you get hit, and you're bleeding. You're going. Ah, that'd be all right. Yeah. Let's, let's just carry on. Peter going, Jesus Christ, mate. Have you seen the state of your face? We're going, ah, a little flesh wound. Let's go. go Monty Python, no arm off. Oh, it's only an arm. Let's get, let's crack on. Oh, I've still got one more. You know, and, and I think it takes a lot of different, you know, nowadays they're training fighters from just from kids, young, you yeah. know, and, and yeah, they're getting a whole full martial out of it. But I think back in the day, it would only be a certain kind of fighter. You go, oh my God, that's the I next. I want him, yeah. He's that's the, guy. the next best thing. You know and then Matt's were packed Every Say Tuesday, again? their mats were packed every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Every <Bruised>. Tuesday, <laughs> bruised and battered. Down. Let's uh, well. let's talk about what well, I want to talk about. We're going to talk about is uh, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, is uh, WC MMA, which is an amateur event that you run. Is that right? Is that yeah, yeah, that yeah, right? uh, yeah, hundred percent. Semi pro event. We put a couple of pro fights on this time. Yeah. We got Kim Farried on on the seventeenth. What's you the know? reasoning behind that? Say again. The pro fights. What's the reasoning? It's too many little pony promotions up. They're, they're all sprouting up around. Like little daisy, they pop up everywhere yeah, around. Yeah. And then you're going, I've got no fight. I need to put a couple of big fights on there just to draw the crowds back in. And it's like anything. People go, oh, it shouldn't bother you. No, it doesn't bother you. But what it does, it just 
pisses the shit out of yeah, you. Because yeah. if you had a pub there called uh, the dog and in, and then two <laughs> meters down the road, the, the, the dog and out come, and then two meters down there, the dog and not quite sure come. You're thinking I'm losing five customers to him, three customers to him, and then down here comes doggy puss or whatever, yeah. and another one. Come, you're like, that. you know, sometimes you don't mind if it's in Southampton or they've got a show, you know, Portsmouth or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't play. impact yeah. you, but when yeah. it's in the two miles From around the corner, you, it, yeah. you, know, you know, it was hard enough. I mean, Fury at the moment. It's goodbye at Fury. Maybe they might come back to you, maybe not. But that was hard. Mm. Even though they're only around, and even though there was only a small show, but it's still, if it took 50 people out of your show, it's still 50 people. Yeah, and if it true. took three fighters that might have fought on your show, but they're fighting three weeks later, they couldn't fight on your So it's, it's all that roundabout mm. and swings. And, and I've never been one to go, you know what? I fancy going down to Swindon, put a little show down <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I, Pop I, a little show <laughs> next to someone else. I'll do that. I've never done that. Yeah. I've always been there. And then Pete recited, oh, I'm like, oh, he's done a good show there. Let's pop a bit closer to him. I've never, I've, I've never done that. You know yeah. what I mean? We've always been the first. When we was at Caesars, there was no one, no one next to us. You know, we were there and that was it. When, when we got to Wembley, no one even heard And that's why we call you the Godfather or well, everyone calls you the Godfather. Well, well they should be that. everyone. <laughs> 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 but I must say, again, I've been to uh, the WC MMA show and the level... The levels of the fighters on there, I think Crazy it's very high. Mate, isn't it? Like, was, you I was, the, was you the last one? I wasn't at the last no, one. No. Was that, it was the last one was off the hook. Yeah, Dan, you were at the last one. The last one was off the hook. Yeah. Yeah, there was no doubt. I had Kim Farrad there, Jimmy Man, they was all going, oh my God, no wonder you're putting pro shows on. Yeah. yeah. Pro fighters on here. You know, that, the, the, the production, everything was just crazy with the Bulgarian dancers. You know, it was amazing. Them, yeah. The whole thing was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It was like people going, this is better than you see ever made. Of course, it, and, and because the guys are really going for it, you know, of they're course. really going for it because they're young. They've only had a couple of fights. They don't care about winning or loss. They want to go in there and win. Some of the fights were amazing. So, yeah, it's, it's a cracking brand as well. Warrior Challenge is a cracking brand as well. Yeah. Why do, what made you want to do that and put on them... I always want, we always want to do a smaller brand. We was going to do uh, use of a contenders, but I, I, we, we offshot that uh, for money to certain people who said they could run it. That failed. Then someone else, <laughs> that failed. So, went, you know what? If this is going, I'll just do my own brand yeah, yeah. at the same place. I'll just do my own little brand and just build up. It's built up. Re- I mean, 21 it's amazing. It's on 21, we're on 21 shows now. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the sort of, we've just uh, sold the DVD rights to Walmart in America. Okay. Uh, from one to twenty, you know, which is amazing. That's, that's an amazing feat. Walmart in America, yeah, they, yeah. they might be out for six months or whatever, but in America, they, they didn't want you to. They went, nah, this shit, they're, they're crazy. These yeah. guys are crazy. <laughs> we want these crazy guys. I'm like, okay, sweet, bomb, yeah. you know. And, and, and uh, where you go, they're in Walmart in America. So yeah, it's a good thing that you do. I was at a show one again on one of yours. I don't know which one it was, but you was like, listen, if you do fancy fighting, there's a piece of paper on the table. Like, fill in your details <laughs> and we'll be in contact <laughs> with no, you. No, know, you know what we do that for as well? Because you get a lot of them shows, what happens? And again, you know, you've got to be crowd control. My eyes are everywhere. You know, yeah. people go, oh, you're a little bit edgy. I mean, yeah, of course I'm edgy. <laughs> There's a thousand people here <laughs> yeah. screaming. It, it, it can flip at any minute. You've got, to, you've got to be on the... So what I say to them, you'll always get like, you're the drunk brother of the... Kick his head in, you yeah. fucking... Uh, Go, remember, guys, up. there's a bit of paper on the table. You really want to give it a big and you, you write down your name. And they go like, yeah, yeah. go on, write down your name, John. Yeah, go on, then. No, no, it's not for me, not for me. Not. And all of a sudden, they start, they start wheeling back in again. Yeah, you know, yeah. not have getting, another drink. Oh, I can do this, oh, I can do that. You know, it's a lot harder saying what you can do, but you actually got to put your name down and do it. And, and be surprised, I swear to God, I think we've done a thousand bits of paper, not one Name, name. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it just shows you, you know. I mean, we always do it. I put, I put it back on the back of the fight. I go, just see, yeah. not very many people. Or you get my get two. I go, hmm. Let me call them Monday. No, my, I was drunk. I was drunk. It wasn't me. Yeah. My mate put, yeah, my mate put my name down. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do it. No, yeah, no, no day, no day. That's what you get. You normally got to go, uh, guys. Like Danny's gym, you got to go get guys from a gym. You know, yeah. that actually you know, know they're training and know they're fighting. But a lot of that's crowd control, you know, mm. because. You get a lot of, if you've got 30, 40 uh, people, he's got 30, 40 people, you need the wrong thing said. So you just got to keep them mm-hmm. nice and mellow. C- keep the whole thing flowing, entertainment, no aggression. Yeah. Well, Dave, look, we're going to wrap things <coughs> up here. You ain't wrapping shit up. We're wrapping <laughs> up. Hey, I've got another hour on here. You see you, cameraman. I see you give, I see you give all that. I swear to God, I'll get in your face. And you for that. Listen, I want to say thank you, Dave. Thank you, hey. Tom. It's been an absolute right. pleasure. Danny, as per normal. Remember... UCMMA.com, July the 17th, September the 5th. Don't Get your tickets. Don't miss it. <laughs>